Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon, and uh, Fulgio Di Fulgio from uh, the International Institute of Applied System Analysis. And I will uh, present you the ongoing work in this project, which we are leading at IASA, where we try to combine forest monitoring and modeling for assessing what is the pathways for EU forests towards EU climate neutrality. And this work here was, uh, uh, is led by us. Uh, uh, you find my name and the uh, colleagues leading it, but also other colleagues working uh, in a uh, remote sensing area, uh, like uh, Martin Herold from GFZ, which is collaborating with us uh, in the merging the remote sensing part with the modeling part where we have the, uh, most of the work coming from uh, YASA. So, uh, First of all, we know that uh, EU forests play a uh, very central role in the EU climate neutrality. Currently, uh, forests absorb 10% uh, uh, of the EU uh, emissions across all sectors. And uh, uh, recently, we have seen that there has been a, a decline of a, a sink from the forest in Europe. And uh, uh, what we see is still that forest uh, uh, within the LULUCF sector is the biggest uh, sink. But if you look at the future and we look at this uh, pathway to uh, 2050, we see that uh, all the negative uh, emissions which compensate for the other sector should come from the LULUCF. And that especially forest uh, will play a, a key role. But already if you look at the... Uh, uh, recent trends, we can see that uh, towards 2030 uh, targets, which were set uh, by the European Union uh, in the LULUCF regulation, uh, we need to revert uh, the current trend uh, in the forest sink. So it's already quite a, a challenge uh, uh, compared to what we observe, and it's uh, even more challenging if you think on extreme events and their role uh, on the forest sector. Uh, this is an example uh, on the uh, right side of what will happen if we we'll have, uh, including uh, climate change impacts and uh, one uh, extreme event which was generated taking uh, from the past uh, uh, occurrence of extreme events and uh, taking uh, uh, yeah, the most uh, extreme, like 95% percentile occurrence. And we can see that the forest in that case uh, could even become a net source instead of uh, being a sink in terms of carbon. So we have started this project uh, to look how we can uh, maximize uh, the role of forest towards this uh, climate mitigation and uh, revert uh, those trends. Uh, designing uh, future pathways, but there we try to take into account uh, both the role of forest in uh, uh, mitigation and uh, adapting them to a future climate, but also deliver in terms of uh, conserving biodiversity in Europe and uh, contributing to uh, the bioeconomy. So at the bottom we have, the, of course, the mapping of the status and uh, recent changes in the forest where it comes uh, into uh, play different sources of data, including uh, also ground data and the remote sensing data, which are integrated. And then we have a, a, a first assessment of what is the forest-based uh, mitigation and adaptation potentials. So we start to understand what is uh, uh, available under climate change in terms of uh, mitigation potential when adapting uh, management to future climate. And then we have a, a more integrated toolbox under development where we link this to the uh, forest uh, bioeconomy uh, to assess what will be uh, possible alternative pathways towards uh, EU climate neutrality when we take into account also uh, different uh, uh, elements as measures which are implemented in the forest management but also in the bioeconomy by use of uh, uh, harvested wood products. And uh, all of this uh, fits into the Forest Navigator platform, uh, which is a platform for uh, informing policy making uh, coming out of the results of the project. Uh, we have a quite a complex uh, uh, modeling uh, framework uh, here. Uh, it starts from the bottom, where we have the integration of the different uh, data sources, uh, where we have integration of uh, national statistics, uh, ground monitoring data, like the NFI data, 
And then on the top of this comes also remote sensing data, but also climate data, which is a big driver of the forest models, and other uh, ancillary data on socioeconomic uh, developments like market, wood market data, but also uh, biodiversity observational uh, data, as an example. And all of this fits in uh, to these uh, three pillars, which rely on the same data, and uh, with different uh, type of uh, aggregation. Uh, we have a central pillar, which is the uh, detailed uh, forest uh, modeling pillar, where we start the chain with the uh, uh, detailed process-based uh, models. Uh, and these are models which are able to work also at the stand scale and uh, 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 then uh, assess what is uh, forest growth under future climate and under uh, disturbance regimes uh, in a very uh, fine resolution. This fits into a calibration of a U-scale uh, forest model. And uh, this has also coupling to our system models uh, for assessing uh, climate feedback uh, from different uh, management action in the EU forest model. And uh, all of this is uh, uh, transferred in what we name the EU policy modeling toolbox and the national policy modeling uh, bo toolboxes. And this happens to uh, meta models and emulators, so the process based uh, models where we can uh, uh, bring along the chain the most uh, relevant uh, uh, variables uh, output from, uh, from the detailed models and have them in a, uh, in a uh, kind of resolution which allows for uh, uh, speed uh, computation in a more complex models where we bring together uh, the land use sector, the climate, uh, the overall uh, uh, economy, and also the alignment to integrated assessment models, uh, which provide us also uh, mitigation requirements coming uh, across all sectors, and uh, also alignment to the uh, biodiversity modeling. And here, yes, we have uh, one uh, modeling framework working at the European scale and one parallel, uh, more simplified modeling at the national scale because one of the objectives uh, in this project is also to look at the alignment between uh, uh, pathways which we designed with the European scale modeling to, uh, to the ones which are designed more with national modeling. Uh, and of course, these are then used for designing what will be this uh, combination of action which will bring uh, uh, to maximize uh, or build up synergies between uh, climate mitigation, biodiversity, and the bioeconomy. What is the uh, central point uh, regarding uh, this meeting is, uh, I think, to underline the role of uh, a near real time update of these pathways because uh, currently in Europe uh, we have uh, a full information on uh, uh, forest structures which comes from NFI data and usually the NFI cycles are uh, quite long to complete a full cycle and to understand what happened in the forest. Usually in Europe we need five years or a similar time span. So if you have a, a certain policy objective in the future and we uh, are using now in 2024 the data from uh, 2020 and we feed our model with the uh, data from 2020. We are able to design a pathway which is uh, quite well aligned to those data, but if we rely only on the NFI data, we will miss the developments which happened in the last few years. So what is a big challenge currently is to shorten uh, these cycles and to provide a yearly, at least yearly updates to the models projecting uh, future pathways. And that's where uh, we are working and trying to uh, update yearly the, uh, the information on the forest uh, status and the recent uh, changes so that uh, uh, if we will design uh, new pathways, we are able to, uh, to correct them and to take into account of the uh, rapid changes and to realign the pathways uh, from our models to the uh, policy targets. Uh, for doing this, uh, uh, we have started, first of all, to look at the current status and the recent past of uh, of the European forest, and uh, for this in the project, we have been developing a EU forest uh, for model, uh, we name it in this way, multi-rayered uh, forest uh, geodatabase, 
where we try to cover the main variables which are used for modeling forest uh, and uh, forest structures like forest cover, uh, above ground biomass, uh, uh, forest area losses and gains, uh, uh, forest age, but also uh, yearly disturbance layers which uh, now are available in, uh, in Europe. And uh, what was our aim was to have a, a consistent and uh, European uh, scale uh, comparable uh, data which could uh, fit to the different uh, models. And uh, for this reason, most of these uh, uh, layers were derived from uh, uh, remote sensing uh, uh, sources. But at the same time, we have started also another, uh, uh, from the another angle to collect uh, information, and it's uh, the opposite because this is starting from the ground data, and in particular, we went to uh, information which is public available and derived from ground data, uh, like uh, uh, NFI statistics uh, collected in Europe by the NATS2. And this is a work which has been led uh, by Boko recently to develop uh, uh, the forest database named uh, UFO. And uh, in this database, we have a, a collection uh, derived from the statistics on the area development, the harvest, the forest growing stock, and the increment. And uh, this was uh, collected in a SQLite uh, database and it's currently at the stage of uh, being harmonized and we'll show some uh, preliminary uh, results from it. And next step will be also to integrate other data sources in this database, including uh, uh, harvest uh, statistics from, uh, or market statistics as an example for uh, tracking the harvest or uh, other sources of uh, uh, information like remote sensing data. So currently, uh, we have uh, records for, uh, as I said, area harvest, uh, stock and increment for uh, 20,000 to 40,000 different entries. For it covers 90% of European forest area, and it covers, depending on the country, uh, between one and four uh, different NFI uh, periods. And it's at the, uh, most uh, of the country, it's available at the NATS too. Uh, one challenge has been uh, uh, how to harmonize all this uh, variety of NFI, which were collected at different uh, time periods. And uh, uh, for this, uh, there is already some modeling work being done that where the craft model has been used as a tool for reconciling uh, indeed uh, uh, forest stocks, uh, increments and uh, harvest and uh, forest area together and to move from these uh, different uh, sources which has different temporal uh, uh, resolutions or different uh, uh, timestamps to handle a consistent uh, uh, database where you are able to uh, track uh, the development of uh, the biomass uh, stocks and uh, reconstruct then on a yearly basis what has been the changes. Uh, I was telling there are some early results uh, on, uh, as an example, forest area change in the last uh, uh, decade uh, compared to the previous one, as an example, or in terms of uh, the growing stock, how it changed uh, in the last decade again uh, compared to the previous decade. Of course, these are very preliminary uh, results and we are still uh, consulting our stakeholders on the, uh, on the relevance. And the next step, as I said, will be the integration of uh, uh, this database with uh, other uh, data sources. And uh, here, uh, remote sensing data will uh, play an important uh, role in uh, reconciling, uh, indeed, what has been observed in the database also with uh, uh, what is uh, currently observed uh, in remote sensing in terms of disturbances. And this for uh, also uh, having uh, more uh, links also to biomass uh, flows and uh, end uses of uh, the products extracted from the forest as an example. So this is uh, one uh, side, which is the data side. On the other side, uh, there is the modeling side. Uh, so, on the modeling side, we have been preparing uh, uh, process-based modeling of a forest where uh, we have integration of different uh, processes uh, driven by the climate and uh, management actions 
and these are uh, uh, process-based representation of the main processes like photosynthesis, mortality, uh, but also effect of disturbances on the forest structures. And uh, as a proof of concept with already an assessment at the European scale of what will be the impact uh, of uh, different uh, climate scenarios on the uh, forest increment, uh, so the forest uh, grow in the future depending on the uh, spatial locations. Uh, now this model is currently under uh, calibration uh, also with three uh, different uh, local process-based uh, models which will integrate in this uh, European scale uh, process-based uh, model and uh, after uh, we will also include the impact of uh, disturbances uh, uh, in terms of uh, natural disturbance event into the model but currently the model is already able to assess what is impact of a, uh, climate uh, change already on the forest. And then the next step will be uh, to have this uh, process-based model integration in uh, forest sector models where you have also the economic uh, uh, component uh, coming on the top of the biophysical uh, component uh, where you will have also uh, demands uh, from uh, society uh, and the uh, policy being uh, represented. And uh, now we are also starting to think how the two uh, different angles should come together. So from one side you will have the model which uh, uh, can provide already a biophysical pro projection of uh, annual growth. So if you have a uh, annual uh, climate data records you are able to update uh, yearly what is uh, the projected growth from the forest. And uh, from the other side you will have a uh, uh, annual data coming from uh, remote sensing and other uh, sources for tracking what is happening in terms of changes on the forest area and uh, uh, also on the disturbances. And uh, uh, a database like the one I was showing from uh, the NFI data could allow the uh, calibration of the remote sensing uh, uh, records to observe uh, the relations between uh, disturbances and changes in the carbon stock so that at the end from this equation we can derive the uh, net annual changes in uh, carbon stocks from the forest on a yearly basis and use this uh, uh, for a yearly update of uh, our modeling results and these uh, pathways which I was showing at the beginning. So with this I uh, conclude and I would like also to advertise that we have an open position currently at our group at, uh, at IASA for your colleagues. Thank you.